Welcome to this uh, pencast, which is about the test of variance. Um, so we're going to introduce this test using an example uh, where we have 10 pipettes that we wish to test f to see if they're precise enough. Now, earlier on, we looked at the test of the mean of a sample or a population, in fact, and uh, what we were interested in there was uh, to test how the observations distribute themselves um, and to be more precise whether there are what they have a mean which is the mean that the manufacturer claims they have so to make a picture we could draw like a, a dart board here and um, we would say that this case here it could be the case that uh, the mean of these observations is actually here at the bullseye where we want it to be. Whereas in this case over here, it seems like the mean of these observations here is not at this target here that we want it to be. So that's testing the mean. Um, and we can do that using a z-test and a t-test. For one sample test. Um, now we would like to focus on the spread of the observations. So we're not actually interested in seeing um, whether the observations have the correct mean, but we're more interested in seeing if they are, you could say, focused enough so I'm trying to draw a case where here over here we have a, a large standard deviation and here we have a small standard deviation. So that's what we're trying to test here. So our null hypothesis would be, well, let's go with the example first. Um, here we have 10 pipettes. The uh, manufacturer claims that the population standard deviation of these pipettes is 8 microliters. So that tells us something about uh, the variance of the amount of liquid that these pipettes uh, actually dispense. So our null hypothesis would be that the variance is equal to um, the claim of the manufacturer, which is then 8 microliters squared. Oops. And the alternative hypothesis would typically be that we then think that the variance is greater than what the manufacturer claims. We wouldn't be interested in the case where the standard deviation or the variance is less than what the manufacturer claims because that we would just think is a, a matter of pure chance. So the only, only thing that's interesting for us is to, I mean, if it's smaller than what the manufacturer claims, that's just fine. We don't, there's no consequence of that. That's just great. Um, so in other words, we're doing a, a one tail test here. And uh, to be more precise, it's a right tailed test that we're doing here. Um, so how can we do it? What is our test statistic? Well, it turns out that this quantity here that we will name in a few minutes, n minus 1 times, um, whoops, sorry, times the sample variance, so that's an s squared here, divided by the claimed 
variance here. That has a known distribution, namely the chi-squared distribution. And since there are many chi-squared distributions, we have to pick which one is the right one, and that's the one that has n minus 1 degrees of freedom. So we need to take our sample here and compute this, the sample standard deviation from this, or the variance if you like, and let's just assume we did that. So it turned out that the sample standard deviation was 12.5 microliters. So that's that's a quite a bit above what the manufacturer uh, claims, but that could be uh, a matter of chance, bad luck, if you like. Uh, but we'll have to do the test to see if that's true. So let's compute the test statistic, and, and we call the test statistic chi-square naught. And in our case, we have 10 observations in our sample, we subtract 1, we multiply by the sample standard deviation squared, so that's the sample variance, and divided by the hypothesized value of the variance. And that gives us roughly 22 so that's our test statistic and what we have to do now is to find out using the chi squared distribution with in our case that's nine degrees of freedom that's n minus one and i can't draw it precisely but it probably looks something like this. It's not a symmetric distribution like the normal distribution. And uh, but the principle is the same. We find the uh, test statistic, which in our case is 21.97. And we compute the chance or the probability of receiving or get an sample which has a standard deviation which is more extreme than the one we actually got. That's the p-value. Now we can't do that by hand. Uh, we have to use software to do that and uh, I'll show how to do this in Excel in just a second. So we'll go to, into Excel. I think I can just move it over here. And uh, let's just type in um, the claim here, which is, um, well, it's not mu naught, it's uh, sigma naught, which is 8. And we have um, the sample standard variation, uh, deviation, sorry, 12.5. And we have the number of observations, which is 10. So we compute the test statistic. I'll just call it x squared. It's a little hard to do these symbols in Excel, but uh, that's all right. We'll just plug in n, which is 10, minus 1, multiplied by s squared divided by sigma naught squared. So there we have the test statistic and we now need to evaluate the p-value sorry p-value and that's equal to 1 minus and then if we look at this 1 minus this area over here which I can just make dotted. This dotted area here, that corresponds to, to the 
CDF of the chi-squared distribution. But we are interested in the in this area here. So that's one minus the dotted area. All right. So let's look at that. So we need the CDF of the chi square. So I'll write chi squared. And if you're English speaking, then it's called chi squared dot dist. But this is a Danish version of Excel, so it's called chi squared feeling, which means distribution. And we need to plug in the dist statistic here. And the Degrees of freedom, well, that's n minus 1. And then we want the cumulative, so I'll write true or sent in Danish, like that. And this is our p-value, so that's not even 1%. It's less than 1%. It's 0.9%, roughly. So whether we... We'll reject the null hypothesis that depends on the significance level. But let's say we have alpha equal to 5%. So that means uh, we reject the null hypothesis because, because the p value is less the significance level. In other words, this result, 12.5 microliters, uh, is just very, very unlikely to get in a sample, uh, the standard sample standard deviation, if the manufacturer actually speaks the truth. So that's why we choose to reject the null hypothesis and accept the alternative hypothesis. The standard deviation of the pipette's dispensing volume is actually greater than 8 microliters. That's what we choose to uh, accept.